In our text this morning, the people of Israel, the Jews here at Nazareth, had become so familiar with Jesus. They had saw him grow up. They watched him as a young man. And they knew him. And they missed out on the opportunities that God had available for them. I am convinced this morning that we can become so familiar with the presence of God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost now. We have become so familiar with the moving of the Spirit of God that we need to every once in a while be taken back to the place where we first believed and remember what it was like when we cried ourselves to sleep. Remember what it was like when the enemy was wrestling for our soul and contemplating we stood beside the brink of eternity, wrestling whether we would live or die, knowing that there was no hope in the present state that we was in. But thanks be to God, he turned it all around for us. And here we are this morning, somehow, some way, we're sitting in the presence of the Lord and, and, and many things around us has overtaken our attention. And there's many things that we don't understand and, and there's many trials in this life. And I'll be the first to tell you, I don't have all the answers, but I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And the Bible tells us here, and I wanna preach to you about being too familiar. Jesus came out of temptation. The Lord had just, God, for 30 years, for 30 years, we, we see Jesus at the age of 12 and then we see him at the age of 30 where he starts his ministry. And the first thing that happens, he goes into temptation in the wilderness and the devil has first shot. He begins to attack and he begins to tempt him and he uses the word of God. Yeah, the devil knows the word of God. He used it and twisted it and tried to come against the very Savior. And the Bible said in verse one that he being full of the Holy Ghost, if you've not received the Holy Ghost, you ought to be seeking after the power of the Holy Ghost. The promise of the Father is for you. I love verse 14 because it said he returned in the power of his spirit. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, you're no match for the devil. You're no match for his tricks and you're no match for the deceit of the enemy. But I'm gonna tell you also that the devil is no match for you when you're full of the power of the Holy Ghost. He can do everything he wants to to try to bring you down. But when you're full of the third person of the Godhead and the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you can go forth and do great exploits for the kingdom of God and no temptation taken use such as is common to man, but God is faithful and will with the temptation make a way of escape. And the Bible tells us that Jesus shows up at church. Woo, glory to God. Now, if anybody knew more than the preacher, Jesus did. <laughs> Can I go ahead and preach to you this morning? Jesus, as a young man at the age of 12, knew more than his mom and his dad, but he still obeyed them. Woo. He said, he said, don't you know I gotta be about my father's business? I'm telling you. And they said, come on, son. And he obeyed. He submitted to the earthly authority of Joseph and Mary. And then at the age of 30, the Bible tells us here that he goes to the house of the Lord. And if anybody knew more than the preacher did, Jesus knew the word. He was the word. But he went to the house of the Lord. The Bible said as such was his custom. He had a habit of going into the synagogue and waiting on the Lord. Why did Jesus go to church? Because when you go to church, you honor God. Well, I know more than the preacher does. You may do it, but you need to go to the house of God because when you show up to the house of God, you're honoring God and you're honoring one another and you are a part of the membership of the family of God and we need each other. Reach over and bump your neighbor and tell him I need you. 
I'm telling you what's a fact, we need one another. There's times uh, that we're low in spirit, Brother Ken, but Sister Jim, God help if both of you get down. But I'm telling you, if both of you get down and you make it to the house of God, hopefully Sister Susan sitting behind you will be full of the spirit and as she begins to praise and as she begins to magnify, all of a sudden your body and your mind and your strength will be renewed in the presence of the Lord in the house of God. Jesus went to church. Just in case you're wondering if you need to go to church, Jesus shows up at church, which was his custom. Woo, this is good preaching. I ain't even got down to my message yet. Jesus took part in church. He showed up. He didn't sit there like a lump on a log. Jesus showed up at church. Oh, to be like Jesus. What would WWJD? What would Jesus do? Jesus would go to church, and when he got to church, he stood up and he read the word of God. They heard him in the house of God. When Jesus got to church, he participated. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Clap your hands. That's all he wants for this. It's all about clap your hands. It's all about. Go ahead. Just sit there. You'll go out to the ball game and come home the next day and won't have a voice because you've screamed and hollered for little JoJo to run with the pig skin. You've hollered for little Sue Sue while she hit the little T ball. And now you come to the house of God. I mean, the one that saved you, the one that redeemed you, the one that's supposedly coming again for you, and you gathered in. To the house of God oh that men would praise the Lord for his wonderful works to the children of God I'm telling you God's been good to you Jesus showed up at church and he participated he stood up and he read the word of God hallelujah had a neighbor from next door got several of them coming now Thank God. I thank the Lord that years ago I signed a paper that they would give and grant the land for them to put the facility next door for our seniors. Praise God. I'm glad I wrote that letter. Praise God. So you'd have a place to live. That's right, Sister Dolores. And I said these words when I wrote it to the state in Austin to the Capitol. I said, I cannot think of a better place for people to retire than in the shadow of the steeple where they can gather, just walk over and gather in the presence of the Lord. But if we are not careful, if we, well, I've been, I'll tell you what, I had some folks, let me get back to my story. I had some folks come over here for the first time. They said, man, we've been in a lot of churches in our life. We ain't never been in a place where feet, people jump and shout and carry on like that. I mean, I almost got nervous. Listen, there's no need to get nervous. We live in the presence of a resurrected Savior who's alive and ministering and moving in the house. And everywhere Jesus went, it was noised abroad that Jesus was in the house. Everywhere Jesus went, there was a folk shouting and rejoicing. Somebody said, show me in the scripture where Jesus jumped and shouted and screamed and hollered. I said, well, I hadn't found that yet, but I can tell you this, everybody he touched did, and if you've been touched by the master, you're gonna do something. Why would they want to testify? Why would they want to stand up? Come on, Brother Dave, because I was once in sin, but Jesus came and he brought me out, Brother Kelly, and I'm sitting here today in the house of the Lord knowing where I could be, where I should be, had it not been for the grace of God, Brother Rudy, but thanks be to God, I'm in his house this morning, but I don't want to get so familiarized. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus takes the book. Scroll opens it up to Isaiah and reads the words from Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord. Oh my goodness. The day the word read the word. 
John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Jesus stands up in the church house and said, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me. Hallelujah. To preach to who? The poor. The brokenhearted. The captives. The blind. The bruised. The imprisoned. Hallelujah. He came. Hallelujah. This gospel comes to the poor to make them rich. I was poor in the trespasses of my sin. But Jesus came. I'm telling you, friend, don't feel sorry for me. I'm rich. I'm increased with goods. I'm not talking about earthly things. All of this down here is going to burn up with a fervent heat. It'll never satisfy. It'll never mean anything. I've laid up treasures in heaven where moth and rust don't corrupt and where thieves cannot break through and steal. He came to preach to the poor to give freedom from sin. He came to give sight to the blind. I was once blind and outcast, stumbling in my sin, but he opened my eyes. Hallelujah. He come to give sight. He come to give liberty, acceptance, and jubilee and joy to the imprisoned. Jesus said, Spirit of the Lord's on me. And he closed the book. (laughs) I know your mind's not like mine. Imagine this stone synagogue. Those of you that's been with us to Israel. Jesus walks in. Comes up here and it's time for him. No, 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 he's a participator. And he grabs a hold of it and he pulls it to Isaiah. And reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach. Closes it. Hands it back to the pastor. There's something about when Jesus speaks. All eyes are in wonder and amazement. Something more than him just reading about Isaiah. And he looks at him and says, This day is it fulfilled in your ears. Today, oh my God in heaven, I wish somebody would get a hold of this. Today, it's fulfilled. I'm not talking about you waiting on your victory another day. I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord is in this house today. I've been bruised, I've been broken, I've been beaten. I'm stumbling around, but the Spirit of the Lord is here today. The anointed one was in their midst. The wonder, the sweetness of him. Hold on. Hold on. Jim Bob, calm down. Is not this Joseph's son? Hold on. I think that's Joseph and Mary's boy. See, they were so familiar. They had been around him such a long time. And so Jesus, he knows what they're thinking. He knows what they're saying. And he said, did not Elisha do miracles outside? Did not God move on the prophet Elijah? What did they do? They brought Food to the poor, the widow that was without. Did not he bring healing to Naaman, a Syrian, that was outside because he was right here among us, but you missed it. Mm. He's lived here among us for 30 years. I mean, the fact that Jesus lived among them for 30 years without sin should have made them step up and realize, hey, this is the Messiah. I know some good people, but I don't know of anybody that's without sin except him. And so he gives them two illustrations. Now, if you you got your Bible open there, 
He gives them two illustrations. He said, now, in Elijah's day, and I want you to say this word with me, many. He said, there was many widows in Israel. It was a, it was a three and a half year famine. And there was many widows in Israel. But they knew about Elisha. What did he say? This was Jesus. And he said he went by all of those widows that was the chosen people of God and he goes down to the heathen village between Tyre and Sidon to Zarephath because there's a woman who's got just a little bit of meal, a little bit of corn. Here she is down there and he knows that she will obey God. And she'll take whatever she has left and she'll give it to the man of God. And so God provides a miracle for a heathen woman. Can I go ahead and preach to you? Let me ask the pastor. Is it okay if I go? He said it was go it was fine. Go ahead and preach. Some of you get so upset when somebody else comes in. And they don't look just like you. And they don't act just like you. And they didn't come from the same part of town or the same tradition as where you come from. But God is looking for somebody who will step out and say, I believe. I need the Lord. I am desperate. I need God to help. And God moves on them. And God works in them. I tell you right now, that can't be God. I know where they came from. I know what they did. I know how bad they are. Here's a heathen widow, but God knew that she would believe. Who's hungry? Who's hungry? If you're hungry, you can be fed. I just don't, I just, I know the way that preacher is. He's going to say, get up there and give me the bill first. Can you imagine Elisha going to the people of Israel? They know him. I know it's time of famine, sister. Go ahead. All I got just a little bit in here. Go ahead and make that cake. For what are you talking about? That's just the way preachers are. But he still feeds the poor. And his mercy was extended to the heathen. That was Elijah's day. So what's he do? Now what did Elisha do? What did Elijah do? Elijah called fire down from heaven. He didn't talk about that. Jesus said he came. And Elijah through the anointing. Fed the poor. With a woman of Zarephath. I'm telling somebody in this house this morning, you can be passed up because you're too familiar. You can be overlooked because you have forgotten. When you first came in and you first got saved, you couldn't wait to get to the house of God. Can I go ahead and preach to you this Sunday morning? You was here early every service. But now you're so familiar. Well, he's going to want us to come back tonight. <laughs> he is so wound up, he thinks we ought to even be here on Wednesday night. He said the Lord might come back on Wednesday night. So he's facing all of these things. Who's hungry? He feeds the poor. In Elisha's day, he said, there's many lepers in Israel. And he passed over them. He passed over the lepers in Israel. Many. Jesus said there was many. There was a Syrian general named Naaman. Syria was a foe to Israel. 
this is the enemy of the people of God and he's sick and he's dying. And yet Elisha, Naaman believes an outsider is healed. The Jews were so close yet so far. Heathen idolatry, a Syrian, an arch enemy of the people of God. Listen, I don't care who you are today. I don't care where you've been, what you come out of. Hallelujah. Now, we often say that, uh, that our crisis, that, that I, and I've even been guilty of it. It was the crisis that brought us to the Lord. But the crisis never makes character. Crisis reveals character. It's in the middle of your crisis that will tell the true colors of who you are. What you do in the middle of the crisis. And if you call out to the Lord, God will help you in the middle of the crisis. The Jews had gotten so familiar with Jesus. The Jews in Elijah and Elisha's day had got so familiar with the power of God that they missed the opportunity. Misunderstanding. Isn't this Joseph's son? There's some of you today, there's misunderstandings. Well, God is supposed to work like this and God is supposed to do this and it didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen. And you can miss. I don't know why God does things the way he does. But I trust him. And I refuse to go to hell over something I don't understand. They was too familiar. They was so close they was in the same house with Jesus, yet so far. Is it possible that we have missed out the touch of the master that he had for us and somebody else received it because it didn't work the way we thought it ought to work? Too familiar. Come and help me, Brother Tim. A heathen from Zarephath. A Syrian, an arch enemy. Here he is. Could receive the healing, the miracle that was intended for me. Remember how you first acted when you got married? <laughs> I've seen some look at each other. Oh, tiny bats, they saw. I mean, when you first started that relationship, I'm going to talk to the men for just a moment. I dare say you didn't talk to her the way you do now. I mean... You didn't say go get it yourself as your legs broke. Why? Because you was looking and you was in love. Remember how it was when you first came to Jesus? the time that was spent together. How many times I've dealt with people in relationships, whether marital or church related. When they first came in, man, it was bliss. But after a while, and see, they had known Jesus for 30 years. they said the spirit of the Lord on him and they missed it he couldn't do miracles in his own country and some of you have been in church so long I'm going to go ahead some of you have been in faith tabernacle so long 
Some of you have been in places where you experience the power and the presence of God. And you know, you know what it's like. And it just become commonplace. And it's too familiar to you. you've taken it for granted and you're missing the relationship you're going through emotion a few years ago there was these these shirts that, that teenagers wore and had focus on it and the word focus was real blurry and you, I mean you had to when you first seen it it's like what and you had to just and then you saw focus I, I'm convinced that we have went through the motions of church and what we need to do is get back and focus on him the spirit of the Lord is here to heal the broken hearted he's here to set at liberty them that are bruised but look what happened they so missed it that they took him out to the cliff and he miraculously slipped away from them They was ready to destroy the answer because they didn't understand. Many lepers, many widows that could have benefited. And there's many in this house this morning that could benefit. But because it didn't happen on your time frame, it didn't happen the way you think it ought to be. And that miracle is about to pass you up. But he's here this morning. Would you come back to a fresh experience and a relationship and let him minister to you the way he can. Father, I pray that you'd help us this morning. I pray you'd speak to us. Draw us by your grace and your power for your glory. There are those here this morning that are that are missing out on the opportunity of being in the fellowship of the Master. And it's over things they don't understand. It may be a misunderstanding. It may be a funeral. It may be a hardship. It may be the loss of a job. Maybe it's a divorce. I don't know what it is, Master, but you know. There are those that you are speaking to right now. And if they don't turn around, they're going to miss... They're going to miss out on the opportunity. And they're going to face heartache, trouble. I pray that they realize this morning that they've taken you for granted. And they turn around, find you rich and real. In the name of Jesus. Would you stand with me all over this house? fresh touch from the master this morning you'd say I need I just need a fresh awakening The Spirit of the Lord is drawing you today. Harden not your heart. You know that you need a divine and a fresh touch from me. Turn 
Look unto me and live. I will sustain you. I will strengthen you. I will lift you up. Cast your care upon me. I am here today for you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. You've become too familiar. And the Lord's minister and drawing you right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Other things has got between you and the Lord. Drawn this morning. <laughs>